For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. about the dog crossing the bridge with a bone in his mouth and how he saw his reflection in the water and thought it was another dog holding a larger bone. So he tried to get it, but when he opened his mouth, the bone fell out of it and he ended up with an empty stomach. Well, this little story reminds me of my roommate, Irma Peterson. Why? Because she must have looked in the mirror one day, opened her mouth, and her brain fell out. <laughs> get me wrong, I, I love Irma. And to me, Jane Stacy, she's the best roommate a girl ever had. It's just that some of the things she says really are from Dixie. For instance, the other day I was reading about the strides made in television, and I said, Irma. Yes, Jane? Do you know that they've just come out with a television set that has an indoor aerial that goes right inside your room? Well, I don't see why we should buy one of those. I've already seen everything that's in our room. <laughs> well, now I know how it feels to be in the Navy. You go through life with an anchor. <laughs> but that's the way it goes with my friend Irma. Every day something unusual happens. Like the other day the door opened and in came a breathless Irma who said... Oh, Jane, I'm so excited. I, I can hardly talk. Guess what? All right, what? Al is about to make me the luckiest woman in the world. He's leaving town. Of course not. He's committing suicide? Oh, Jane, be serious. All right, out with it. Al is going to marry me. But, Irma, that's impossible. Your raise hasn't come through yet. <laughs> oh, Jane, please don't belittle the man I'm giving my name to. <laughs> This time he's serious. Irma, you needn't look at me that way. I refuse to believe it. Who's going to be the best man at the wedding? The man from the unemployment office? Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you, Jane. Al is coming to some money. $500. $500? And you want to get married? Believe me, Irma, that's not enough for a nest egg. But, Jane, we don't want to raise birds. We want to have children. <laughs> Irma, that's just an expression. And what is more, before I believe this fairy tale, I'd like to know one thing. How did this uh, uh, Horatio Alger in reverse boyfriend of yours manage to get his hands on 500 honest American dollars? He got it by honest work. He got an unusual tip on a horse. <laughs> what do you mean, an unusual tip? Well, he saw a jockey coming out of a drugstore with an arm full of drugs, and since he knew the jockey wasn't sick, he bet on the horse. <laughs> and uh, the horse won? Won? Al said the stuff made the horse run so fast they had to lasso it to get the jockey off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Even with that windfall, I still don't think he'll marry you. Oh, he will, Jane. And isn't it wonderful? I've waited so long for him, and now it will be just a short while before I hear the preacher say those wonderful words... Two dollars, please. <laughs> and with Al, it'll be an I-O-U. Come in. Flowers for Miss Peterson. Flowers? Oh, they must be from Al. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I'd like to give you a tip, but I must save the money for my children's piggy bank. Uh, I get all kinds of excuses, but this is a new high. <laughs> Sometimes I'm sorry I ever graduated from college. <laughs> Jane, I'm so nervous. Gosh, you open it. All right, honey. Oh, here's a card for you, honey. Read it. Oh, it's in Al's handwriting. Dear Chicken, with these flowers I send you a message of love in the heart of a rose. Be careful when you smell them, Chicken. Don't get no thorns in your nose. <laughs> 
look how he worries about me. Signed, Al, your husband-to-be. There, Jane, do you believe it now? Well, I, I, I don't know what to say. I, I guess the miracle has come to pass. I might as well get out the rice and old shoes. No, Jane, don't cook tonight. We'll go to a restaurant. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I know what you mean, Irma, and I forgive you because you're really excited. Are you happy for me, Jane? Well, uh, of course I am, honey. I, I couldn't be any happier if this were happening to me. Oh, Jane. I'm so glad you're as happy as I am. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Girls, why are you crying? Who died? I did. I mean, uh, I'm getting married. Al's finally going to marry you? Oh, I'm my little darling. The old professor is so happy for you. Oh, girls, I haven't cried like this since the first time I looked at my room. <laughs> Tell me, Irma, what finally decided you and Al to get married? A horse. Oh, you mean Mrs. O'Reilly talked Al into it? Oh, no. Al made some money at the racetrack, and he says now he's going to be able to pop the question. Oh, I'm so happy for you. And Irma, since your parents are so far away, maybe you would make the old professor happy by letting me give you away at the wedding. Oh, Professor, of course you can take the place of my father. Maybe Mrs. O'Reilly could take the place of my mother. Yes, and maybe on the way to the church I could give her away. <laughs> <laughs> or are you going to have the wedding in the daytime? Uh, come in. Hello, girl. Oh, Mrs. O'Reilly, guess what? Irma is getting married. Oh. Jane, you shouldn't have mentioned it. Now Mrs. O'Reilly will feel bad because she didn't bring me a present. Glory be, Irma, darling. I'm as happy for you as if you were my own child. Well, thanks, Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> oh, and marriage is such a wonderful thing. So many men don't know what they're missing when they stay single. <laughs> Mrs. O'Reilly, you can talk until you're blue in the face. I don't hear you. <laughs> don't be so conceited, Professor. For your information, a man 20 years older than myself wants to marry me. That's nice, but the thing that bothers me is how can he make a living, a man 80 years old? <laughs> Don't go insulting me age. And if you had any brains, you'd know there's no such thing as an old woman these days. A little fix in there and a little massage in here and a little paint there and a woman is as streamlined as a roadster. <laughs> I got news for you, Mrs. O'Reilly. The bottom has dropped out of the used car market. Why, uh, you flea bitten old fiddler. If you old... change my bedroom, please, bedfold, please, please, want the to... two of you. This is a time for rejoicing, not bickering. Oh, excuse me, Irma, darling. We should know better. Tell me, are we invited to the wedding? Well, of course you are. You're my dearest friend. Well, now, sweetie, don't you worry about a thing. I'll take care of all the details. In fact, I'll be delighted. The way Richard has been stalling me, it'll probably be as close to a wedding as I'll ever get. Oh, thanks, Jane. And since I'm going to see Al tonight, I'd better start getting dressed. Oh, talking about dressing, Irma, darling, I'm a little worried about what I'll wear to your wedding. Well, Professor, what's the matter with the tuxedo you have? It looks wonderful on you. No, Jenny, you saw it only in the daytime. At night, it lights up and says, eat at the Gypsy Tiro. <laughs> To me, this is a little too commercial for a sentimental thing like a wedding. Well, I have no problem. I'm going down to me hope chest and get out the gown I'll be wearing at the wedding. Mrs. O'Reilly, you're not going to wear that same one you wore at the fireman's ball. Why? Uh, do you think it was a little too revealing? <laughs> yes, your face stuck out. <laughs> Goodbye, girls. Bye, you old bat, you... Oh, sweetie, I I'm really very happy for you, but I've got to leave you now because I'm having lunch with Richard. Say, maybe if I order some orange blossoms and rice, he'll take the hint. All right, Jane, I have to, re I have to practice my lines. Goodbye. Uh, now, let's see. Uh, do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded wife? <laughs> I do. No, that's wrong. Let's see. Uh, do you take this woman to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do? No, no. Uh, do you take this awfully wedded woman? <laughs> Still, 
doesn't sound right. Come in. Oh, for goodness sakes, Amber Lipscott. I'm so glad you dropped by. Come on in, honey. Thank you, dearie. Amber, you look lovely. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> Must be because of my new fur piece. Oh, it's beautiful, Amber. I'm glad you like it. It's fresh killed, you know. <laughs> my boyfriend, Gerald the Jockey, was on a hunting trip last week and he ran over it. <laughs> oh, it looks like a porcupine. Well, Gerald is very thoughtful. He knows I like to have my back scratched. <laughs> Tell me, dearie, what's new with you? Oh, Amber, the most wonderful thing has happened. Al and I are going to get married. Honey, prices are going down so you don't have to pick from the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> Besides, you ain't got a chance for happiness. Why not? Dearie, did you read the February issue of True Happiness? No, I didn't. Well, it's got an article by Dr. Wendland Fischel, the noted marriage analyst. And he says that 99% of all married couples that are divorced are separated because they couldn't get along. With each other? Yeah. <laughs> you see, dearie, let's face it. Most men are crumbs. Oh, but my Al is so sweet. That's what you think now. When they're courting you, it's like Halloween. They all disguise themselves as human beings. <laughs> but after you're married, they switch over to Labor Day and you find yourself working for them. <laughs> oh, Amber, you're bitter. Look, dearie, after you've been jilted by eight guys, you learn a few things. <laughs> and like Dr. Fischel says in his article, most people rush into marriage and then get separated. The smart people have the trial separation first. And then if they miss each other, they get married. What should I do, Amber? Take my advice. Don't see Al for a week. Don't write to him or answer his phone calls. You, you look at this as, a, as an experiment, as if the two of you were a couple of guinea pigs. <laughs> Amber, I don't think that's a fair comparison. Besides, it might have some effect on our children. <laughs> Look, dearie, I want you to be happy. And you gotta be so careful. Look, when you make a mistake in the office, you can rub it out. But when you're married, sister, it costs an awful lot of money for an eraser. <laughs> oh, Amber, you've convinced me, and as soon as Al gets here, I'll tell him. No, dearie, when you see him, you'll weaken. Get away from here. Say, I got an idea. I'll stash you away up in my place in the Bronx. It'll be just like your quarantine. Quarantine? Yeah. Anything wrong with that? No, it's just that it's not sentimental. It makes marriage seem like a disease. <laughs> Don't think that you are safe from film. Run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, you have film, and you need Pepsodent with Irium to remove it. For film is worse than you think. Film collects stains that make your teeth look dull. But remember, Pepsodent toothpaste removes film, makes your teeth look bright. Film harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. True, but Pepsodent removes film, makes your breath fresh and clean. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. That's right. But Pepsodent toothpaste removes film and the acids it contains. Film never lets up. It forms continually on your teeth. Yes, you have to fight film every day. So brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent toothpaste. Because no other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. No other toothpaste contains irium or Pepsodent's gentle polishing agent. So start now to fight film with Pepsodent, the toothpaste with an exclusive formula for removing film. Cheer up, sister, and you too, mister. Pepsodent. Pepsodent. The paste for you. When I went out to meet Richard... I left Irma with her head in the clouds. But it must have rained since then. 
For now I am sitting in the apartment holding a note in my hand which could bring tears to the eyes of a potato. And for 15 minutes I've been trying to decipher its meaning. Well, I'll read it once more. Then I'm going to send for the wagon to take me away. <laughs> Dear Jane, I will not see you for a week because Dr. Wenland Fischel says the price of erasers have gone up. <laughs> And Amber and I are living in the Bronx like two guinea pigs. <laughs> so when Al calls, explain that this is a trial separation, and if he does not understand, tell him not to feel too badly about it, as I do not either. <laughs> but I know it's for the best. Try not to get in touch with me, as I am quarantined. Have never felt better. Love, guess who? <laughs> oh, Mother, this brainstorm of Irma's is a new low. Come in. Here, Here comes, comes the bride, bride all dressed, dressed in white. white. <laughs> Where is the bride to be, Jenny? We are practicing for the wedding. Yes, where's my little darling Irma? Well, you can both stop practicing. The wedding has been postponed. Oh, that's terrible. And I was just about to tell Irma that I wanted to give her a shower. She'd be insulted. She'd think it was something personal. Here, read this note. Oh, let me see. Ask for a trial separation before marriage? Well, that's ridiculous. This is like scratching your head before it itches. <laughs> well, maybe little Irma wants to make certain. Many of us girls have been stuck with a pig in a poke. Where you are concerned, I don't consider that being stuck. <laughs> now, just keep, keep me out of this. I can see Irma's point of view. I went through misery with my late husband, Clancy. After we were married, he'd run around all night with his carousing and fun-making. I had to stay home, but I managed to get my fun in, too. How? I used to hide in back of the door, and when he came in, I'd say, peek a -boo, and let him have it over the head with a chair. <laughs> You know I never take Al's side when I can help it, but I really think Irma's idea of a trial separation is preposterous. And I know where she got the idea. She's under the influence of Amber Lipscott. That, uh, that loudmouth female impersonator. There's no telling what can happen. I've got to get Irma back home from the Bronx. Do you think you should interfere, Janie? After all, Amber outweighs you, conservatively speaking, by a hundred pounds. <laughs> Look, Professor, I know Irma. She has a mind like a bed, and someone has to make it up for her. I wonder what that Amber and Irma are doing up in the Bronx. Amber, huh? how long have I been separated now? Forty-five minutes full of a watch time. <laughs> take it easy, dearie. Well, I miss Al terribly, and what if he gets annoyed by m my quarantine? Look, dearie, if a person loves you, ten years is not a long time, I know. I've waited. <laughs> well, I've started. I might as well go through with it. Oh, sure, dearie. You don't want to be married and have a sink full of dishes while your husband runs around, and the baby is crying, and the milkman wants his bill paid, and you have to make excuses for your husband who's lost money on the horses. Oh, of course not. No. Well, I'll get it, dearie. Hello? May I speak to Irma Peterson? Hold it, Lady Aster. <laughs> Irma, it's your stuck-up roommate. Well, what can I tell her? Just remember what I just got through telling you about marriage. Hello, Jane? Irma, what in the world are you up to? Al just called for the eighth time, and he's frantic. What should I tell him? Well, tell him it's for our future happiness, Jane. I don't want what happens to a number of people to happen to me. I'm not going to sit in the sink with Bill while my husband runs around with the milkman. The babies are washing the horses. Dearie, you're lousing up the whole bit. Tina, I didn't get that exactly right, but you know what I mean, don't you? No, I don't. Well, I'm not going to weaken. What else did Al say? Well, he just said that he loves you. <laughs> That's a fine thing for him to say when I'm trying to forget him. <laughs> Irma, I'm telling you for the last time, if you don't come home, I'm coming up there and drag you out if I have to pull you by the hair. No, Jane, you can't. I just had a permanent. <laughs> Jane! 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 What's wrong, dearie? Jane is coming up here. She is. Well, that's just dandy. 
I can't wait until she walks in. As soon as she opens up her kisser, I'm going to let her have it so hard she'll look like part of the wallpaper. <laughs> who, who can that be? I'll find out. Who's there? It's me, Mushy. <laughs> oh, oh, it's Al's friend. Let him in. Hello, Amy. Hello, Mushy. Uh, what do you want? Well, Al got your message, and he's just gone to pieces to think that you could doubt him. Oh, oh I don't doubt him. Uh, just tell him that he's on trial. Amy, you know, Al, if I mention the word trial, he'll blow town. <laughs> Well, that guy really loves you, Amy. Here is your box of candy he sends you with a note. Give me the candy, Amy. Why? This is a real separation. You gotta forget that Al exists and I'll help you. I'll eat the candy. <laughs> well, just let me read this note. I'll read it to you. Uh, dear chicken. Gee, it's good to hear his voice again. <laughs> I cannot under... Under... Uh, let me see. Oh, that's how he spells understand. Uh, I cannot understand how you can doubt me. After all, I thought that the girl who was going to marry me would think more of me than my best friends do. At first, I was very angry with you, but now I understand your angle, so wish you would just eat the bottom layer of the candy, as the top one will make you very... Amber... Amber, why are you, Amber? I don't feel so good. <laughs> um, well, don't worry, Amber. You'll enjoy the bottom layer. Uh, let me finish the note. Um, chicken, we must get together again. I cannot wait a week. You mean so much to me. I have already told them at the unemployment office that my financial worries are over as I am getting married. <laughs> Give Mushy your answer. Love, Al. Well, Amy, what is the answer? Amy? <laughs> oh, Mushy, tell Al I'm, I'm just as miserable as he is, but in a week from now we'll be married and we can share our misery. Okay, Amy. You got a dime for Subway fare? <laughs> a dime? Yeah. Al paid my fare here. But he says since marriage is a 50-50 proposition, he didn't want to leave you out of it. Oh, he's so thoughtful. Here, Mushy. Oh, thanks, Amy. Goodbye. Amy, I'm proud of you. You got character. But I'm not happy. I feel like a fairy princess locked up in a castle. And out there in Sherwood Forest is the man I love. Robinson Crusoe. <laughs> I'm too heartsick. I'm tired of this experiment. Can't we stop being pigs for a while? Uh, come in. Oh, it's you. Uh, yes, yes, it is, Amber. D do you mind if I come in? Yes, and no cracks about my place. Oh, I, I, I think it's very charming. It smells, and you know it. <laughs> uh, look, Amber, I, I, I don't want to start any trouble. I, I resent your tone. I never start trouble. I have my opinion of you, and you have your opinion of me, and you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> have a piece of candy. Oh, thanks. From the top layer. No, no, Jane, it'll ruin your figure. Uh, Irma, can I have a word with you in private? How dare you describe my place that way? <laughs> Please, Amber. Irma, I, I want you to understand, I never thought much of Al, but you love him. He wants to marry you. Now he has a little money, and this is your chance. But Jane Amber says that it's a smart thing to do. Well, I think it's asinine. It's a good thing you agree with me, or I'd let you have it. <laughs> Hello? Just a second. Irma, it's your Al. Well, go on. Talk to him, Irma. Irma? Oh, Jane, you talk to him. The doctor says the separation must be complete or it won't take. Please, Jane. Oh, hello, Al. What? Yes, Irma is here, and so is that, uh, 
M-O-R-O-N-A-M-B-E-R. Mobile Oil? Why, she hasn't even got a car. <laughs> what, Al? Irma, Al says he's got to talk to you. It's very important. Irma? I can't wait any longer to marry him. He's a man I love. Hello, Al, honey. I'm ready to get married. What? Oh, no, Al. Well, Al, goodbye. <laughs> Weedy, what happened? Oh, Jane, we can't get married. Why not? You know, the money he wore, won on that horse fast, Daddy. Yes? Well, Al tried to increase it by betting on a horse called Son of Fast Daddy. Well? Al says some of the smartest fathers can have backward children. <laughs> Don't think that you are safe from film. Nearly everyone has it. Just run your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, that's film. And you'd better get Pepsodent toothpaste to remove it. For film collects stains that make teeth look dull. It harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid that many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. And remember, film never lets up. So brush your teeth twice a day with film-removing Pepsodent. No other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. Get Pepsodent with Irium today. Pepsodent toothpaste fights film on teeth and cleans breath too. Pepsodent toothpaste gives film on teeth the old skidoo. with an old maid of 24 who is still in love with a mad genius, age unknown. But having learned her lesson, she won't do anything that will separate her from Al. In fact, at this very minute, I am trying to clean the apartment and Irma is sitting on Al's lap. Irma, will you please get up for a minute so I can finish the cleaning? No, I'm not going to take any chances. Just mop around us. <laughs> Well, speaking of mops reminds me of spring cleaning. But what I, Jane Stacy, wonder is if even with spring cleaning, the cobwebs will ever come out of the head of my friend Irma. <laughs> My Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Park Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean, and it is brought to you by Pepsi and Toothpaste with Irium, another fine product of Lieber Brothers Company. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Part of Al is played by John Brown. Hans Conrad was heard as Professor Kropotkin and Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music was under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Trouble on the Telephone. When he phoned, she was telling him... I'd love to go, Herb, but I promised Mother I'd stay in. That's what she said, but what she was thinking. Oh, Herb, you could be nice to be with, but nobody likes you with film on your teeth. Herb ought to remember, and you should too, that film makes your teeth look dull. It breeds bad breath, glues acid to your teeth, and film never lets up. So fight it with film-removing Pepsodent. Get Pepsodent toothpaste with Irium today. When you contribute to the 1949 Red Cross Fund, you are not just giving to the Red Cross. You are giving through the Red Cross to the American people. Yes, the American Red Cross is a partnership of the people of America. So give and give generously to your Red Cross. Tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, followed by the Pepsi and Show, My Friend Irma. Both brought to you by Lieber Brothers Company. Wendell Niles speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.